Okay, moving on now to the role of the law reform commissions. So they investigate and provide law reform recommendations on matters that the Australian Attorney General refers to it. So it's an independent Australian government agency. And state or federal government can initiate a royal commission um, on any matter connected with the public, with peace, order and good government of the Commonwealth or any public purpose of any power of the Commonwealth. A bit of a mouthful. But usually royal commissions are called when there are reports of an illegal activity or a gross administrative inability in an area of Australian life. So we've had things in the past, like, for example, uh, the nursing home situation where there were reports of lots of different problems and mistreatment in nursing homes. And then as a result, a, a royal commission was, was heard, was held. So there are some strengths and limitations when it comes to law reform and royal commissions. So royal commissions are independent from the government and so they are therefore free of that kind of political bias in a sense. Um, but it is at the same time... Um, the parliament's choice whether they implement the recommendations and it's actually the the government's choice whether the commission is um is initiated to begin with so it's unlikely that one is going to happen if it's against the interests of the government so if it does happen then that's great because you do have that sense of independence and freedom from bias but then the the actual initiation can be problematic and then implementing any recommendations can be problematic because that can be influenced by those those government kind of um, motivations and opinions um, they are really thorough so we saw earlier with that example um, that it took more than five years um, so they they are very thorough and take in a really wide range of sources and opinions um, to make those recommendations but then with that of course it is very expensive very time consuming and that limits the amount that can take place you can't have just a royal commission into anything and everything uh, because that's just not feasible from that resource point of view. And if the recommendations of a Royal Commission are implemented into the law, the laws will be that effective representative uh, kind of thing of the opinion of the people. So you've got some strengths and weaknesses um, that kind of um, show the the limitations but then the benefits as well of royal commissions so let's have a look at an example of a royal commission so a royal commission into the child protection and youth detention systems of the government of the northern territory was called in 2016 by the federal government and the reason for this was actually the media. So we saw earlier um, that one of the um, impetuses for law reform was the, um, was the media. So in this case, an episode of the ABC's Four Corners aired. And this showed footage of corrections of officers who were mistreating um, the young people in detention. And that triggered this this call for for this royal commission and the purpose was to inquire into the treatment of children in detention centers and to make recommendations about legal and cultural reforms to prevent that kind of treatment and improve the overall child protection system 
So you can see here uh, Dondale Youth Detention Centre, which was a big focus with, um, with this situation. And the final report in this case included 147 findings, 227 recommendations. And so some of the recommendations in this case were the responsibilities of the territory. So it can be the, the state or territory that needs to implement changes. And it can be some that, res that relate to the Commonwealth. In this case, 29 were related to the Commonwealth. And the Commonwealth is that federal level with all of Australia. And you can see in this case, the Commonwealth responded to 26 of the 29 recommendations. So it resulted in, in pretty big changes and it did respond to most of those recommendations.